Our first speaker is going to be talking about embracing strengths. Please welcome Carrie Brown, class of 2008. <laughs> Hope it works. Okay. So we're going to take it back to 1985. One day when my parents came home from work and they had received my first kindergarten report card. They expected to see the usual things about me developing ABCs and one, two, threes, but they also saw something else. A comment that read, Carrie tends to want to manage others a little too much. <laughs> so, there's this whole concept of nature versus nurture, and I truly feel this was my nature emerging. I didn't know it at the time, but this was basically the start of my leadership journey. I want you all to think back to when your nature first started to emerge. How old were you when some of those innate strengths were starting to show? As a five-year-old, I was completely oblivious to what my strengths were. But I remember finding that report card years later and asking my mom about it, and she sat and told me stories about my personality at that age. And I had to laugh. Because those of you who know me know I can have a pretty strong personality. And I got a lot of feedback about that growing up. Carrie, you're an A student with an F student's attitude. Carrie, you have no tact. Carrie, let's face it, patience is not one of your virtues. Partly based on that feedback, I started to develop my sense of self. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm sassy, bossy, pushy. But I also knew I had a ton of passion. And other teachers recognized that too. This is a yearbook entry from my seventh grade algebra teacher. And she called me a small keg of dynamite with a great personality. She liked it, but for some, I think dynamite was a little too much. And so it got to a point in college where I had to admit, people either seemed to really like me or they made me dislike me. And I needed to do something about it because I wanted everyone to like me. I also can't help but point out that the yearbook entry below this is addressed to She-Ra, you know, the princess of power. I wonder if she cared if people liked her. Probably not, so, but I did. So in college, uh, I was a communications major and I was introduced to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This was like the holy grail of self-improvement to me. I thought, wow, if I could just reach self-actualization and be all I'm meant to be, well, that would just be my life's goal. And it's funny because it still is in a lot of ways, but I also realized life is a lot more complex than a two-dimensional here. I was blessed from the time I was born to have my basic needs and beyond met. So in college, I was probably hovering somewhere around the esteem level. And I thought, I'm just going to go for it. I went on a crusade of self-awareness. Because I thought, if I'm going to reach my full potential, then I need to figure out what's wrong with me. What people don't like, and I need to fix it. So what did I do? I spent the next decade focusing on my weaknesses. And it pretty much felt like I was swimming against a current the entire time. I did not take criticism well. <laughs> so, uh, one, if someone tried to give me feedback, I thought, I'm aware. And two, I honestly think I was feeling pretty low about myself. I knew I had skills, I knew I could do the work of my jobs, but I couldn't even answer the question when my boss asked me, Carrie, what are your strengths? Because I was so focused on my weaknesses. I was having a very hard time recognizing my nature as my strength. At this point, maybe you're thinking, Carrie shared a lot of time to sit around think about herself. But I'll tell you, that only lasted for so long because then my husband and I decided to start a family. And I became a mother. And everything changed. It is a love like no other. And somewhere along the way of keeping tiny humans alive, I realized I want to be the best person I can be for them. My family, my friends, the people who really matter, and most importantly for myself. So I started making some changes with a lot of encouragement and support from my family and friends, especially my husband Kyle. I found a new job in Felt University which has allowed me the greatest work-life balance I could ever imagine. I started seeing a life coach. I began investing in my health and wellness. I also re-engaged with CLN around this time. And the timing could have been more perfect. Um, I joined the Program Development Committee, and it has been an amazing experience working with Donna Lunchball. I also had the opportunity to uh, find a new retreat facilitator for CLN as part of our strategic planning process, and Kirk Young and Kyle Reyes is who we started working with. And they brought us this concept of strength-based leadership. It's the assessment we use for the incoming class now. And I took it. And it wasn't necessarily the assessment itself that gave me any aha moments. You know, it's always great to see your strengths in a new light. But what really struck me was just the simple concept itself. To be a better leader, a better person, 
You focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. That was a revelation for me. And it made me realize, you know, what it just made me ask the question, what if we actually focused on what we loved about ourselves instead of what we hated or what we thought people hated? I came to the realization that self-awareness without self-love is self-destructive and it's counterproductive. When you focus on your weaknesses, you lose confidence. When you focus on your strengths, you gain confidence. And it doesn't mean that you don't work to improve your weaknesses. You can just approach it in a much more balanced way. It really gives you the confidence you need to be honest with yourself, to grow from that, and also to lead. Part of CLM's mission is to nurture leaders. The nature is out there. The talents and strengths of the people in our community, it's just amazing. The leaders, our colleagues, and our next generation of leaders. According to Gallup research, oh, I got some. Oh, I already did that, okay. Um, according to Gallup Research, employees are eight times more likely to feel engaged if the organization they work for focuses on their strengths. And um, that just, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Because <laughs> there's a baby, and I was talking about babies. <laughs> so anyways, according to Gallup Research, employees are eight times more likely to feel engaged if the organization they work for focuses on their strengths. And that's gonna be good for the organization and ultimately the well-being of the individual. If you constantly focus on what's wrong with your employees, they will lose the confidence to do their job, and their productivity will suffer, and so will their business. Through all of this, I've learned that no one's going to magically reach their full potential and stay there. It's an ongoing process, and one that honestly takes a lot of work. But I'm also beginning to realize that in doing the work, you have the opportunity to impact something far greater than just the self. Revisiting Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I discovered he added another dimension in his later years, self-transcendence, which basically says the self can only achieve actualization in giving itself to a higher purpose. And then I found this quote by David Guzgan, which basically brings it all together for me. And it basically says, you know, the purpose of life is to discover your gift. The work of life is to develop it. And the meaning of life is to give your gift away. No one will ever be perfect. People aren't always going to like you. You aren't always going to like people, and sometimes you won't even always like yourself. But if we can just shift our thinking to focus on the good, the positives, and the gifts that we all bring to the table, and share it with each other, it just might be the thing that we all need to reach our full potential. I encourage you each to embrace your gifts. Do the work to strengthen them, and then go and share them with others, so in turn they can feel inspired to do the same. Thank you.